Hello and welcome to Smart Training 365. This is Mo and I'm with Doug Brignoli. Doug, how are you doing? Good, Mo. Thanks. How are you? Very good. Thank you. So today, Doug, we're going to talk about legs. Okay. This is a subject that many requested and specifically the quads. So Doug, before we talk about the legs, I would like to see the anatomy. Let's go through the anatomy and see like the insertion, you know, and okay. then we start talking about the exercises. Okay. All right. So um, here we're looking at the, uh, well, we're looking at a lot of different muscles here, um, but the biggest muscle is the quadriceps. Um, you'll see like a diagonal line on both the left leg and the right leg. That is not part of the quadricep. That's called the sartorius. That's one of the hip flexors. But for the most part, yeah, that's right. For the most part, almost everything else you see there uh, is, uh, is quadricep. Now, show us, Mo, why don't you point to that muscle on the very, very outer side on both legs, right there the on both sides. Yeah. That's called the tensor fascia lata. That is also a hip flexor. So the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata are two of the four hip flexors. Um, the other one, one and a half, it's called ilio. So as you can't see, because it's underneath the abs. And then the middle of the quadricep is also a flexor. But so what we're looking at is quadricep, four muscles. Um, you can only see three of them from this view. And that's because the fourth part of the quadricep is underneath those three fibers. Now, all four of them um, connect to the tendon just above the knee. That's called the patella tendon or the quadricep tendon above the knee. It turns into the patella tendon below the knee. And then the patella tendon connects to that upper part of the shin right there, right below the kneecap. That's where it connects. Right, so now three of the four quadriceps originate on the femur bone itself, on the thigh bone, high on the thigh bone. The fourth one originates on the pelvis, which means it crosses the hip joint. That's called the rectus femoris. The rectus femoris um, is one of the four quadriceps. It is one of the four that converge on the patella tendon that then crosses over the knee. So its function, as are the other three functions, to extend the knee. The one in the middle, the rectus femoris, has the dual function of also participating in hip flexion. But that's the only one of the four that does something other than just extend the knee. So when we're talking about working the quadriceps, we're going to be talking about exercises that primarily extend the knee. So when we look at a compound movement or an isolation exercise, that's what we're going to be asking ourselves is, is this exercise extending the knee and how efficiently is it doing that? Right. So now that we covered the anatomy, before I show you the first exercise, I want to share with you something and I want to hear your opinion about. Many times we hear that a study of, let's say, people, 50 people did squat versus other did a different type of squat, let's say 50 and 50. They did it for two, three months. And then they come up with a result and saying that those group, you know, got the most results because they did this one as, as compared to the other one. But how is this accurate? Because when they selected the 50 and 50 people, they didn't also, also select the people who have the, the, the identical genetics. They didn't have the, the right uh, body composition, okay? And also, they didn't change them, let's say, after doing that uh, test for two months. Those who did, let's say, the first exercise, they didn't also go and then do the second exercise and switch for two months and then compare also, you know? So I don't really feel that the analysis and uh, the studies that they do are really accurate. How, how do you consider that? Well, um, you, haven't, you haven't said what the difference uh, from one group to the other group was. So we're, there could only be two differences. One is in the amount of growth, and the other is in the type of growth, meaning that this one built this part of the quadricep yeah. more than that. Okay, um, so we'll address both those. There's just no way that an exercise that engages the quadricep 
whether it's a leg press or a leg extension or a squat or a hack squat, that any of those exercises can work any part of the quadricep more than another part of the quadricep. That's just impossible. And the reason is very simple. And that's because all four parts do one thing. All four parts cross singularly with one single tendon over the knee and the knee does only one thing. It only extends the knee just like a hinge, right? It goes, right. E -e 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 -e. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, in mechanics, um, in order for something to function a certain way, it has to produce a different outcome, right? So if you're going to say this particular exercise works the outer quad more, the logical question would be, well, then how does that change the way the knee extends? It can't, it doesn't. It only, in other words, if you have an inner quad and an outer quad, and the outer quad is working, and then theoretically this lower leg should go toward the side that it's pulling. Right. And if the inner quad is working more, then the lower leg would have to move to, but it can't do that, right? There's just no way that you can cause the knee to bend in more or extend in more than one direction, right? And there's only one tendon to do it. So mm -hmm. it's not like we have one tendon that pulls this way and one tendon that pulls this way. All the tendons pull straight. Right, and the knee does one thing. So all quad, all four of the quadricep muscles participate at the same time. There's just no way you can emphasize one part over another part more. That's number mm -hmm. one. Number two is if you're going to say, well, this group had more muscle growth than this group, you'd have to explain why. You'd have to explain how. Right. So what we know is that muscles grow when they're loaded. Yeah. Right. If you were a muscle. You'd have no eyes. You'd have no ears, right? All you know is you have a tendon and that tendon is connected to that bone. It crosses the joint. And so you, the blind muscle, you contract and you extend that joint with a certain amount of force that is required of you for this particular exercise. Mm -hmm. Now, exercises are mechanical things right? Just like a crane is a mechanical thing, right? So you can measure how much load is required if the crane is at this angle versus if the crane is at that angle. So whenever you're dealing with limbs, you're dealing with levers. And whenever you're dealing with levers, you're talking about classical mechanics, which has to do with percentages, percentages of load, right? So you, the blind muscle, when you have a certain amount of force that you must produce in order to move that joint, you all you know is how much force you have to produce. You, that's all you know because you're blind, right? So right. that the amount of force that you must produce, let's just say I've got to produce 90 pounds of force in order to move that joint you're asking me to move. I don't know whether the mechanics of the exercise you're doing is that you're using 100 pounds and 90% of that 100 pounds translates to me. Mm -hmm. It could be that you're using 300 pounds and only 30% translates to me. 30% of 300, 90% of 100, either way is 100 pounds. So if you're using an exercise like a squat, which allows you to lift a heavier weight, that doesn't mean your quadriceps are loaded more. Because mm -hmm. you're getting a lesser percentage of the weight you're using. Right. So if you compare a barbell squat with, let's say, 200 pounds, and you compare a sissy squat with no added weight, just your body weight, because the lower leg tilts to different angles, because the squat only tilts the lower leg forward yeah. 30 degrees, you're only going to get about 30% of the load of the weight that's on your back on the quadricep, but you're going to get about 90% of it on a sissy squat. Mm-hmm. But you're going to think that you're, sissy, that you're not loading your quadriceps as much on the sissy squat because you're not using any added weight. And yet that doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is how much load the quadriceps feels. Yeah. So you don't agree with, with these studies? Well, they're misleading. They're misleading because they don't point out that there's physics involved. Mm -hmm. and now, what they should do, if they're going to do a study... They should say this exercise produces this percentage of load to the quadricep. And this exercise produces this load to the quadricep. Now we're going to do the study. Now we're going to see the growth. But we at least we're, 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 we're looking behind the curtain. Right. Right. Now we can actually see how much load is on each quadricep. What we should be concerned about is 
efficiency. Yeah. How do we get the most amount of load on a muscle with the least amount of skeletal strain? Because 300 pounds on your skeleton is not good for the skeleton. Yeah. Right. And if you're only getting 90 pounds of load on the muscle for this 300 pounds of load on the skeleton, that doesn't make a lot of sense, especially since it's right on your spine and it's compressing your spine. All right. Let's see the first exercise. So this exercise is recommended for the outer thigh. So you can see that the, the positioning and the form itself is not really comfortable, but it is recommended. And if you want real gains, you have to work hard for them and you have to do something different than other people do it. This is considered an advanced movement. You can see on my face how hard it is. <laughs> Look, the first thing that just stood out at me, you know, well, maybe not the first thing, but one of the things that really stood out at me was when you said that whoever was recommending this exercise said, uh, if you want superior growth, you have to do things that other people don't do. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. It's, there are lots of things that other people don't do that aren't good, right? So if it's good and everyone knows about it, everyone's going to do it. So that means now you can't do it because everybody's doing it. You got to do what people aren't doing, even though it's... <laughs> no, he's it's not going to sell. He's not going to sell not, yeah, other it's programs. It's just not logical, right? He's trying, to, he's trying to sell the concept that this is unique insider information, right? It's like, um, look... Again, let me pretend that you are the quadricep muscle. On that thigh, on that exercise. And you don't know this guy sitting sideways. You don't know there's only one leg involved. Nope. You don't know what color the room is. You don't know what time of day it is. There's a lot of things you don't know. The only thing you know is that you have a job to do. And that job is to straighten the knee. Period. Now, obviously... The femur is going forward, and that's the gluteus muscle, the hip extensors that are doing that part of the movement. But the knee extension part of the movement is being done 100% by the quadriceps. And the quadricep is extending the knee exactly the same as it would any time the quadricep extends the knee. Whether you're going up a flight of stairs, whether you're stepping up onto a box, whether you're doing a straight squat, whether you're doing a leg extension, whether you're doing a sit Knee extension is knee extension is knee extension. Now, the idea that this is working the outer quadricep obviously has no basis in, in science, no basis in fact, no basis in physiology, right? It's impossible. But let's try to suppose why this person might be saying this. The only thing we can suppose, and I think we're probably correct in supposing this, is that if I do a, a leg press straight and my quads are working, where are my quads? On top. On top, <laughs> right? So if I turn sideways, what's on top now? No. <laughs> Look, I can get on my hands and knees. I could face the ground and do that leg press. And it's still the same quadricep extension. That's almost like saying that if you face north, you work the outer quad more. But if you face south, you work the inner quad more. Yeah. It's like the quad doesn't know. It's doing one thing. It's blind. It has one job to do. It's extending the knee, period. You can't extend the knee in any way other than one direction. And the exercise is uncomfortable. Like if you use heavy weight, your, back, your lower back is going to be damaged. And by the way, I, I saw what you were doing with your hip. I mean, for you to sit at this yeah. angle and let your hip go... I mean, that's not good for your hip joint either. And you no. didn't know what to do with the other leg. You were trying to put it up, trying to yeah. put it down. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you don't recommend that? Not at all. I mean, look, <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is like trying to do a, a dumbbell curl behind your back, right? It's, yeah, I'm taking advantage of the fact that my elbow is bending, but I'm going to bend my elbow in the most complicated, uncomfortable way. Yeah. That's not good for my bicep. That's not at all good for your bicep. And it's also not good for the shoulder joint. And in this case, not good for the hip joint. All right. So please don't try that exercise. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Now the leg press variation. Put place your feet on the top, then you will work your glutes, you know, and your quads. Then if you only focus on if you want to focus only on the quads, then lower your feet position. Okay, so as you see, push with your uh, heels, uh, controlled movement. And you see the movement here is short. What I'm saying by short, first of all, let's see also the third position. This is for the inner thighs. My toes are pointed out and knees out. Okay, so here we're going to see this movement. If you were doing it like this, you see, this is what's happening on the machine. Right. Right. That's what the knee are doing, but I'm doing that on the machine. So right, look at the right. range of motion. Right. All right. Okay. So um, the first exercise you showed with the feet very high. Yes. Uh, actually, before I tell you, uh, we have to sort of explain something that happens in physics. Uh, and that is that there is a line of force in all exercises. And so the first thing that we do when we analyze an exercise, we say, where's the line of force? So the line of force on a leg press would be from your feet. You draw a line from your feet to your hip. That's the line of force. Okay. So what you're going to ask yourself is once you draw that line and you want to draw that line in the descended position and in the up position, mm -hmm. right? What you want to ask yourself is, is that line that I just drew crossing the lower leg and or crossing the upper leg and how, how much? In other words, how perpendicularly or how parallel? Right. Um, the more parallel it is, the more neutral that limb is, the more perpendicular it is, the more active the muscle that controls that limb is. So when you're in the first exercise, when your feet were very high, if you draw a straight line, you see that at no time does the shin ever actually cross that line of force. Very, very, very little quadricep force. And the reason for that is because if there was, if you put oil on that pedestal, it's possible that your feet would slide up. Right. Right. So because there isn't oil and your feet are stuck there, that means there's a certain amount of quadricep involvement involved because of what's called friction force, mm -hmm. right? The friction, the fact that you're not able to slide that foot up means that that puts a little bit of load on the quadricep, but it's very, very small because the, the line of force isn't crossing the shin. The line of force is crossing the upper leg bone. Mm -hmm. So yes, it is working the glute, but, and this is what's important. And this is why it's so important to really understand the physics of exercise. <clears throat> you can't say, as some EMG studies say, the muscle is loaded. Okay. What about the range of motion? What about the resistance curve? In other words, you can't say the switch is on or off. You can't say the muscle is activated. There's three other important questions that you have to ask. One is, how much is it loaded? right? It's like a dimmer switch, right? Maybe it's on, but it's on dim because mm -hmm. it's only getting a, a fraction of the load that's actually being moved. That would be, okay, the muscle's active, but not very active because of the mechanics. Number two is the range of motion isn't complete. Part of growth, muscle growth, muscle development requires full range of motion. And number three is, is the resistance curve productive? Is it heavier in the beginning and heavier at the end. And of course, that question almost doesn't matter unless you're doing full range of motion. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a little itty bitty motion, why would you bother saying it's harder at the beginning at the end when there's almost no motion at all, right? So what, what I want you to notice, if not you, Mo, but if the audience wants to go back and, and replay that, what you would see is that, yes, the femur does come up close to the rib cage. The hip is dramatically bent right which is basically like a tricep fully extending a belt an elbow fully bending but then when you extend because of being in the piked position meaning that there's when you finish you're nowhere near where that gluteus muscle contracts where does it contract it contracts somewhere near having your femur and your torso parallel or your femur slightly past parallel to your torso that's where your gluteus contracts. Your, gosh, 
90 degrees away from that. Far, yes. A lot, you're not even, you're not even halfway to the contracted position of the gluteus. So yes, you're loading it, but you're only loading the first 20 degrees of the range of motion. That's not good. That's not good glute exercise. Then the second one, you brought your feet down. Okay, now, again, draw that line of force. And you notice that that line does cross the lower legs. It does cross the shins. That means that lower leg is now an active lever loading the muscle that operates it, which is the quadricep. So yes, you are getting more quadriceps on the second one and less gluteus on the second one right. than you did on the first. But you're still not getting an efficient quadricep loading because that line of force at best is about a, at about a 45 degree angle to your shin. In other words, you're not perpendicular to it yet. Right. And, and here's the thing that's interesting is everyone says, Oh no, this is a compound exercise because there's more than one joint involved. The fact that one more joint is involved, one than more, more than one joint is involved means that both joints, both sets of muscles will be compromised mm -hmm. in their range of motion. In other words, let's just say you saw someone standing from the side without any way, just for the sake of experiment, and they descended into a squat, right? You, what you would see is that the lower leg only dips forward about 30 degrees. Right. So if I said, okay, let's make that lower leg more horizontal, more perpendicular with gravity, what happens to the upper leg bone? It goes almost vertical, which means you eliminate the glutes. In other words, the more you emphasize the quads, the more you de-emphasize the glutes. And vice versa. The more you emphasize the glutes, the more you de-emphasize the quads. So when you're doing an exercise that does both, both of them get half the load, mm -hmm. half the percentage of the load you're using. That means that, yes, you're working both muscles, but I would say, what's the advantage of that? You might say, what's well, a savings of time? I would say, it's not a savings of time if each of the muscles ends up getting less stimulation than they would get if they were work separately. And what is the cost? Right. How much weight do you have to use in order to do that? And what is the cost of that on your skeleton, on your knees, on your hips, on your back, whatever. So um, yes, it is true that if you bring your feet down, you get more quads, but you're still not doing a good quad exercise. Then you bring your feet wide and you do it this way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now naturally there's going to be more adduction. Meaning yes. that your, your thigh bones, your femurs are actually opening up a little bit when you descend and they are actually coming together, but they don't come all the way together. No. Nope. Right. So you can't get full contraction of the adductors. So you'd be better off on with an inner thigh machine if you wanted to work adductors. So, you know, it's one of those exercises where you say, well, if you're happy having one third the benefit on all three of these muscles that are working, because what you really prioritize is time fine. At least know that you're getting one third the benefit. If you think you're getting 100% benefit in one third the time, you're mistaken. Right. That's actually not true. High energy cost, low reward. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you want to, we want to treat working out like an investment, like a money investment, right? Right. You wanted the, the least amount of energy cost, the least amount of skeletal strain, yeah. least amount of injury risk, joint yeah. risk, right? And the most amount of muscle load and the most amount of muscle gain, which means the most amount of range of motion. Yeah, which I showed. The, and the ideal the, resistance curve, yeah. The range of motion was so short, like when you do it outside <laughs> outside the machine. Right. You know? Right. Well, that's why you show it that way is because you can see much more graphically that the femur bone is far from being parallel to the torso. Right. Right. That's where the, the, the gluteus contracts. If you want to contract your gluteus, you don't stick your leg straight out in front of you. You, you, you stick it back.